That is a music video titled Back to Sender, shot in the UK by a young German man who has decided that he loves Nigeria so much, he likes our pidgin English, he likes our culture, and who knows, maybe very soon, he would like to set up here as his base. I'm talking about Nikki Tall, and he's here with us in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks so much for Hello, having me. Hello, Nikki. Thank Let's so start much. with what picked your interest in Nigeria. You're German, you know. Greek German. Greek German. My dad you're... is Greek and my mom is German. Okay, so you're Greek German. Yeah. You have no affiliation to Nigeria whatsoever. Not by blood. So how <laughs> did you, how, what interested you in Nigeria? Um, it was the music. Uh, because uh, when I was 17 years old, I started to join a nightlife and go into uh, clubs. And uh, my older brother took me out. And there was a guy who was a Nigerian DJ. And um, by this time, Congwaso, this song from Nice, was booming. And I heard that song, and I was like, that song really... You know, when you listen to a music and it really gets you without even you don't know, understand the language, then it's like uh, you really get addicted to it. That's happened to me. And that's how I picked up interest in it. I was a musician already before because I'm coming from a music background and um yeah it was like uh, i listened to the song and with that little yoruba and pigeon i speak those days uh yeah i made a cover of that song i uploaded on youtube and uh it went from there, viral uh, it went viral yeah and from there first invitations came uk if you perform this song for stage something all those things you know so <laughs> that's how it picked up and then now 10 years later i'm still on it okay Okay, so how, how, <laughs> how has Nigeria actually, you imbibing the Nigerian culture, mm -hmm. I heard you love Pounder Jam and Igusi soap. That one our favorite. Sorry, I, I'm <laughs> speaking okay. pigeon. No, speak your pigeon, it's fine. No, it's fine. We actually want to hear yeah, your yeah. pigeon. Yes. Okay. So like, what actually drew you to the Nigerian culture? Because you're so deep in it, from what I know. Yeah. So right. you, you already mentioned your introduction with Nice, you know, Nice's music. Yeah. So after that, what then made you imbibe the Nigerian culture? Um, I just, I think I just got addicted to it. After, after it was the music, or uh, let me come up with something you guys like to interest here. I had a Nigerian girlfriend by this time too. <laughs> <laughs> From there, that was a big influence as well. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about you learning how to speak Pidgin English. Yeah. What did it take? Um, and how long? The, the advantage that I had, because right now a lot of people, they have interest in Pidgin English. Especially in Europe, there are some white people let me say white people, some European people, they like to speak that, that pidgin English what they hear from Nigerians or other West Africans, let me put it that way. And um, they keep sending me DMs on Instagram or everywhere, say, how did you learn that pidgin? How was that? And I said, my advantage was that I, I didn't knew English before. So by this time, when I started with Nigerian music, I couldn't speak English before. So I started with pidgin English before I could even speak proper English. Wait, oh. at the time you... Fell in love with Gongwa, so you could not speak English no, at no, all. No, 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 not at all. Just wow. a little bit from school. Like school those days in Germany, like English in school those days in Germany was not really like a big focus. So um, there were some basics that I could speak, like uh, "Hello, how are you?" and all those things, but not like deeper conversations. So my English was not really good at all. And um, from there, I started, uh, yeah, having contact with Nigerian people and got a lot of Nigerian friends. And I told to them, but first, say, "Make us a bit too well." They're gonna talk to me like this. Say, "Mega, I get down." Nice. <laughs> so that's how it, that's, that's how it started. And um, then I could. There was a time I could speak pidgin English better than normal English. And then I had to my career like it exposed bigger and bigger. And I had to take care about my management affairs. And I had to write letters and all that to manage myself because I was managing myself till now alone. And um, I had to take care about that one too. And I said, "You know, let me sit down and learn proper English." at least a little bit better than I speak in those days. So I would ask again, is Nikito the only person in his family who speaks Fijian? Or did you get to rob yes, that, no, that no, part no, of your no, life no. on other family no, no. members? I brought it to our family. Are you serious? Yeah. Let's look at how your family reacted the moment <laughs> they decided, they saw that their Greek German son went all the way to West Africa, learned the language, in fact, learned English and then learned Fijian and is also doing their songs and imbibing their culture. Did you get any attacks or criticism from your family at first? Um, at the beginning, definitely, it was, uh, just imagine yourself, you are a Nigerian, born and raised in Nigeria, and one day you wake up and you tell your parents, I want to become a singer in Greece. Mm. What did your papa go tell you? 
Funny thing we say, my papa no first of all, I don't know what my papa go tell me because my papa don't die. Oh, so but like say he did are alive. I shall not trust <laughs> him go mind though. It depends on the kind of papa we get. But you get where I'm coming from, I, right? I, I so totally get where that is from. of course it was at the beginning they were like, I said, mm, what are you doing? But uh, the good thing is uh, when I started, like there was already like some some success was already coming immediately after I did after I started with it. So I uploaded one video, it went viral, and next day I was an internet sensation. <laughs> that how it was those days. And then the first calls came and say, come to the UK. And I said to my dad, I say, call your sister because I don't speak English. There are some messages coming in on my Facebook. We have to reply. So um, that's how the whole story went. And then, yeah, from that time, they were supportive. Let me say from day one, yeah, they were supportive for it. At least they let me do my thing. Hmm. That's already enough. Okay, you know? so aside music, what else do you do? Because I uh, know um, you're a technician of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was um, uh, I learned mechanic for cars. Like I've been to school, normal, uh, let me say, medium education. That's how you call it in uh, Germany. And after that, I was mechanic for cars. And then later on, I did a, I expanded to a salesman career for Mercedes Benz. And I was working in that company for five years. And after that, I the latest job I was doing was a chemical technician, for an, uh, for a company that produces like catalysts for exhaust systems. So that was the latest job that I was doing for the last four and a half years. So do you do, you do music fully now or do you shuffle yeah. different? No, now I'm fully on it. Like, uh, let me say fully on it. Um, I started 10 years ago and in between that time there was always like a normal full-time job that I was doing and I was always having my career by the side. Let me say by the side. I was doing two full-time jobs because I never, I never lost the priority on Nikita and didn't just focus on Nicholas, you know? I just made my normal nine to five and shift work and this and that. But in between, I said, you know, this is my vision. This is my dream. If I go to sleep, I dream about it. If I stay awake, I live it. Mm. And that's what I did. Be beautiful. Like, I'm so impressed. Mm. Your English is really good for someone who did not know how to speak <laughs> Thank English. Thank you so much. And for someone who learned how to speak pidgin English first. Yeah. We'll check out another of Nikki Toll's video. When we come back, we'll still be speaking some more with him. And I promise you, of course, we're going to make him speak that pidgin English. When I go, hear him. But after this break. <laughs> 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 okay, we hope you enjoyed that video by Nick at all. I can't wait. Yeah. And I really can't wait for us to delve back into a conversation with yeah. you. How many Nigerian languages do you speak? I heard you speak Yoruba there. Uh, yeah, in, in that song I used Yoruba. And uh, Yoruba is actually the, uh, the main language I was focusing on from the beginning. I know it, was, it was the one I picked up most interest for. And uh, it sounded sweetest to me. Are you and sure it's not because you had a Nigerian girlfriend? Was she Yoruba? No, you Ben. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, let's talk about also intercultural relationships yeah. as well. What were some of the highs and the lows yeah. of, you know, being in an intercultural relationship? Yeah. Um, like, I think the way I grew up, because I'm mixed already, I'm Greek-German, so I'm coming from, um, from a house that has two different mentalities, and um, I grew up in, a, in the German, let me say, in the German society, as a foreigner somehow, because the way I look like and the way my last name is, anywhere you go, any office you enter, people will be like, oh, you're not born here, right? But uh, at the end of the day, most of, a lot of foreigners were, a lot of uh, like non-Germans were born in Germany, actually. So um, I know about that, that's the way I grew up. So for me, any woman I would date or would settle down or would marry would, would be a mixed mentality, interracial relationship, marriage, anyhow. So um, what I would say between me and, for example, like a Nigerian girl, I would say that the Greek mentality is not that far from the African mentality, while the German mentality is much more far from Greek and then it's even more far from African. African mentality. Yeah. So uh, I think my Greek side is the one that makes me um, really, uh, really cooperate with Nigerians that good. Mm, okay. So we can actually say there is hope of you ending up with a Nigerian woman. Yeah, very, 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 mm. can be true. <laughs> very, <laughs> okay. very realistic. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I'm actually curious to see what areas, because if you say your Greek side is similar to the Nigerian side, I want to see what areas of our cultures are similar. Mm -hmm. So, for example, are our marriages, have you attended a Nigerian wedding? Oh, I uh, performed for a lot of Nigerian weddings. Oh, really? Okay. Are there similarities? In what areas do we have similarities as well? Um, 
I know I saw my Greek fat wedding, wedding in the movie. Yeah. Big fat that's what I'm wedding. Okay. Yeah. I saw how dramatic it was. And I know we can be that dramatic as Nigerians with our weddings and our celebrations as well. Uh, I think I think about when it, when it comes to about weddings, I think there's no other no other nation in this world apart from Nigerians that can top them. Because the way <laughs> what they do is we don't do it that big. Okay. We do it big, but we don't do it that big like Nigerians. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Ain't no party like a Nigerian party, actually. That's what I it agree. is. <laughs> True. Um, okay. And uh, um, like the similarity, I would want to say, in a, not like in the tradition, because obviously Greek tradition is far from African tradition, but I would say in the mentality about like raising children. Family. Uh, Family-wise, you know, that kind of um, uh, holding together and putting family as your priority, number one, which I, which I would say that is... It's not so common in the in the German mentality, or let me say in the North European mentality. We have more like that. That Greek mentality is more like this: um, one day you fight, next day you're okay. The other day you're okay, next day you're a fighter. But you still know you're related to that person. It's your family, it's your blood. Nothing can take that away. And uh, that's, I think, the mentality what Africans share as well with us Greeks, which some Germans do not saying anything bad about Germans, but I would say they don't expose it to that kind of level that you would think, okay, there are, I feel like always like, that's the difference between the happiness that you find in Africa and the happiness that you don't find in, let me say, North Europe, because it's social cold, emotional cold. And uh, that's the difference between Greek and German and African, I would say. Okay. Okay, so I'm also going to still ask concerning the issue of raising children and family, yeah. you know, over there in Northern Europe mm -hmm. and here in Africa. What are the things that, you know, you had as values that you were trained with that you feel is actually similar to, you know, that of Africa? For example, we grew up learning how to greet, respecting our elders, yeah. you know. Some people feel that Africans do that thing, it's overrated, it's too much. Why do they do it? Mm -hmm. Is are there similarities to issues concerning elderly respect in Greek, just like we have in Africa? Um, I'm born and raised in Germany, so I could speak more on behalf of the Germans on that matter. So um, I like that about Nigerians. That's my uh, first uh, yeah opinion about it. I like that the way uh, that that there is a process like every child goes to 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 understand how how it should be right, you know and uh, in Germany, you have more like a lot of, uh, you see a lot of misbehavior, especially about uh, raising children. And it's kind of like, uh, I think it's the mix out of both to, uh, to, um, to find the right way in 2018 to raise your children. Because right now, tradition is one thing, but going with the time is another thing trust me that struggle to, is not just that in struggle Germany is not easy or in Greece. yeah yeah and, and that's that's Nigeria everywhere in the everywhere. world exactly. it's everywhere in the world and i We're think evolving. it's 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 the mix that both it and i think it's part of the i'm not a father yet so i can't say i can't talk about it but i would say that it's that is part of the parents finding the balance between um sticking to your tradition and not forgetting your roots where you're coming from and who you yes. are and giving that to your next generation but at the same time going with the time because otherwise you're you're raising you're raising a, a child that is is not connecting with uh with the rest of the society very true you know? that that struggle is something that every parent around the world is true. currently experiencing and that's the balance they all need to find let's talk about your music you know yeah. and your your night your music in nigeria the journey yeah. so far i'm sure that you've had lots of highs and lots of you know moments and exciting yeah. moments tell us your most exciting moment so far as a Nigerian, because you're not a Nigerian musician, <laughs> as a Nigerian musician. The most exciting moment so far, I can say that directly, was when I was 2008, 17 years old, sitting in my room, singing that Congwaso song and uploading it. And in 2015, I went to uh, this place here in Nigeria, and uh, I got introduced to uh, Nice, personally, for the very first time in my life. And... Uh, in 2017, we had the opportunity to perform together at the One Africa Music Fest oh, in London in front of 40,000 people, you know, and we shared that song, we shared that stage together. And that was my, uh, that was my, one of the best moments in my life so far. 
And I, I'm looking mm. forward to seeing more. Yeah. You know, you're really talented. And Thanks a lot. Nigerians Thanks a lot. are very welcoming Thanks people. So yeah. we have an open heart that welcomes you to you know, do true. all that you need to do. Let's also talk about, you know, why exactly you're here in Lakers. You know, this is festive season. Usually here we say IJGB. I just, I just got back yeah. in town. <laughs> and in this category, it's like you're one of them because you're not based in Nigeria, no. are you? So you come in from time to time. So yeah. what, what bring it down? What brought you to... Lagos. Um, how this, are you planning your this, this season? The other times when I came to Nigeria, it was more like I was uh, I was doing my shows and my programs in Europe, and I was waiting for let me say invitations that gonna take me to Nigeria. And um, the last times when I was in Nigeria, I kind of like overloaded my schedule so much with appearing on every interview, appearing on every TV, and responding to every invitation I was getting, every corner. So uh, I was busy with running around without even realizing where I am and this time in uh, yeah 2018 right now I decided to come for the whole December to uh, yeah get close to that December wahala you know where things are mm. where everything goes everything on and everything happens in yeah. December so um, uh, that's, that's why this time I really uh, like to get closer to my fans and uh, yeah invite them to uh, personal meet and greets to some public places that I've announced on my social media that's really a big thing. So this trip is more about like uh, meeting people, giving back and showing appreciation about uh, the fact that I'm on and off, like I'm in Nigeria, but most of the time I'm not in Nigeria. And for so many years, my fan base and my followers, they never fall my hand. Show you get down. I get um, in fact, never form a hand. this PG where we don't delay, maybe it's time don't reach where we will take speak this PG as we won't take wrap up this conversation. No, so, no. so maybe you tell us what would be the most the most exciting thing so you they like to do anytime when you come to Nigeria. How you tell they enjoy the kulele for Nigeria whenever you come? You me, if I if I if I touch down for Lagos, now the thing alone if I day airport, if I go come up for that side and I see the heat, I feel the heat, I feel the <laughs> see the people, I see the wahala where they go on for then and that one already now satisfaction. Seriously. Mm. You like so, any Nigerian food? Apart from pounded jam and the soup. Now we know that one. Now we know plenty of Nigerian food. I don't chop tire for Bele or Radio. But, mm. uh, you don't chop Amala? Amala not be my favorite too. Mm. I don't feel I'm like that. You don't chop jollof rice? Uh, jollof rice is standard. <laughs> <laughs> are the ones that, even myself, I do on my, my own for Germany. Okay, yeah. you, you sabi go pounded jam and egusi? Yeah. Wait, on your own. cook them, not be chop. You sabi cook them. No, but the pounded jam and make them. The egusi, I'm still a learner. Okay. And also be our method. Okay. To that level. Okay. But I'm okay. getting there. I'm Interesting. Getting there. Thank you so much for joining us, Nick and Tall. Thanks a lot. We wish you all the best with your career. You're Thanks doing for so me. amazing. And you know, I'm sure this is some sort of inspiration to someone watching. You started out your career, traveled hours, you know, came down to a country you knew nobody, yeah. learned how to speak two languages because English is a language, Pidgin is a language. You yeah. learned how to speak those languages as an adult. Mm. So there is no age limit to whatever it is you want to do. So long as you can think it, you can achieve it. And the internet is your friend. The internet gave Nikki, you know, helped to project his career. We're hoping that you would gain some inspiration from this as well. So if people wanted to hang out with you, contact you, how can mm. they do that? You know, you say this trip now for you to take bond with your fans. Yeah. Oh, well, it's, uh, my social media is quite very structurized, so it's very easy to find me. It's just Nikki Tall, N-I-K-I-T-A-L-L, -L okay. on all social media, but at I am Nikki Tall. At but the events where they happen, so when did they happen and where? This, no, th this, time, this time I'm not coming for a particular event. Oh. This no, one in terms of a and greet, so make oh. people check in Instagram oh. so they will see us. They're free checking from my page. I do exactly. it every Sunday, 9th, 16th, and 23rd. Okay. The 9th is on the mainland in Lagos. The, uh, the 16th is on Lagos Island, and 23rd is in Port Okay, so oh. if now if you follow me for social media exactly. right now, you feel know where to find me. Exactly at I am Nikki Tall. Now all the information go there. So Nikki, as you don't tell us now, say so you speak Pigeon, you mm. speak English, you have speak German. Mm. We won't put you on the spot now. We go check out your video, but we won't make you talk something for. German. German. Maybe, you know, tell them, say, oh, my name is Nikki Tall. Okay. You're watching Hello Nigeria. Thank you for joining us and don't go away, something yeah, yeah. like that. You, you don't ready? Yes, sir, I'm ready. All right, so. Where's the camera? Where should I watch it? Now that, that camera, one? Uh, so, hallo meine lieben Nigerianer, uh, ich bin Nikolas Georgakis, aber ihr kennt mich mehr als Nikki Tall und es uh, ist eine ganz große Ehre für mich hier zu sein und dass ihr mich so in eurem Land aufgenommen habt und ja, um, yeah, ich uh, bin einfach dankbar, dass ich hier sein kann und dass ihr mir diesen Traum ermöglicht, dass ich ja, um, yeah, das machen, können, machen kann, was ich möchte. Dankeschön dafür, uh, ich liebe euch. And in Greek? In Greek? 
That was okay. that was that was German. You want to know what I said? What did you say? I said uh, I introduced myself. My name is Nicholas Georgakis, Nikki Tall, as you know me. And uh, I said, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, for accepting me as one of yours like that, oh, and uh, yes. welcoming me like this, and um, giving me the opportunity to live my dream. Oh, how sweet. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And I'm hoping that this will encourage somebody. Those of you that don't know how to speak your language, you can't even speak half language. You know, think about this one. Go home and go and use Google. Google is your friend. To enjoy more of this, our Ugon get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.